So right behind me is a multi-tenant industrial warehouse, and this is one of the hottest asset classes in all of commercial real estate. So today I'm gonna to go into the building components, what makes these properties attractive, and that is very important for you to know because it can create massive opportunity for yourself or for your clients. There are five things that I wanna go over today that makes these industrial properties attractive. And the first of which I'm gonna talk about is ground level versus dock high. So on a dock high facility, that means it's gonna be four feet off the ground where a semi-tractor trailer can back directly up to it so people can load product on and off the trucks. As you can see, this facility is on the ground, so it's gonna be a ground level facility. Next, we're gonna talk about the roll-up doors. So this is a 12 foot wide by 14 foot high roll-up door. And this is what makes properties attractive because that means you can get more product in, more product out, and more efficiently. If you have a massive warehouse space and there's only one or two warehouse doors, that means all the products inside, there's a constraint about getting them in and out. So the more warehouse doors you have, the better products can flow in and out of the facility. Next up, I wanna talk about the clear height of an industrial building. And this is one thing that brokers, investors, and landlords often get wrong. And this is vital to know because there's a variety of different measurements in a warehouse building that you wanna know. So at the side of a beams, we usually call that the eave height. And at the center, if it's a pitch, that's usually the apex, which is going to be the tallest point of the building, but that is usually not the clear height. So the clear height is going to be anything where you are passing through the facility really at the lowest point. So if you think driving through a bank or driving through a fast food restaurant, you see that bar that says, hey, it's 13 or 14 feet to clear it. Think about it that way when thinking clear height in industrial properties. Another very important component of an industrial buildings is the power. So what you are most likely going to see in most industrial facilities, which is the most attractive, is three phase power. And then there's also single phase power. So the difference between single phase and three phase electric is really the consistency and also the dependency of the electric being supplied to the building. So in industrial buildings, a lot of times you have CNC machines, you have forklifts that are being charged, you have other things that are drawing a lot of power. So that is why three phase is vital to have in these industrial facilities. And last but certainly not least, we have the office space in an industrial facility. So this is usually gonna be about three to 5% of the total square footage because most industrial users, all they need is a space to set up shop, have a bathroom, maybe somebody in here with a computer doing some admin stuff, but really what they are focused on is the warehouse space and shipping in and out products. So a few things that I would look for when trying to find massive opportunity are one, below market lease rates. So this is something all across the United States rents, especially in the industrial sector, have really skyrocketed. So there are a lot of industrial facilities that have below market rents, which means that you can come in, raise rents, fix the place up, and then it is a value add opportunity. And ultimately, if you raise the rents, you raise the net operating income, which ultimately raises the value of the property. Another thing to look for is the lease structure. So in many old industrial leases, a lot of people did gross leases or modified gross leases. And that means that a tenant really just pays a all in number and the landlord usually takes on all of the expenses, especially in a gross lease. But if you convert to a net or a triple net lease, that means that all of the additional operating expenses the tenant is now going to have to cover. So if you find an industrial building that may have gross leases on them and now the landlord is paying for all the expenses and there's a shorter average remaining time left on these leases, you can then convert them to triple net leases and that means that the tenants pay for all those operating expenses, which means that your net operating income is also a lot higher and therefore once again raising the value of the property. You can also see if it is unoccupied or maybe there's some vacancy that you can lease up vacant space. So get out there and dig through the trenches and find these multi-tenant industrial deals because they are gold in these strong markets all throughout the United States. And for this property itself, we just saw a 2,500 square foot unit, but this is 130,000 square foot in an industrial park. And the two strategies that we talked about adding value to these properties, we use that exact same strategy to take this value of the asset from 9 million to more than 15 million dollars in less than two years. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the video.